guys, I want to show you a little tip here uh, with these front engine mount gussets on the firewall. It, it'd be really easy to accidentally put these on backwards. So let's take a look here. I want to show you there's two ways that someone could potentially put these on here. If we take a look right up here at the firewall and the side uh, of the fuselage here, it'd be really easy to take these two pieces and put this like this and go, wow, that's, I'm going to start drilling my holes out and put that in there like that. That is not the right way. This is actually the left side. So this goes over there, which means we slide this one in. And what it should look like, you should have the two holes on the bottom or the side of the fuselage and the five holes against the firewall. And what that does is it allows you to have those bolts that are going to be in there for the actual steel engine mount that's going to beef that up. So make sure you're putting this in correctly. Again, the two holes are on the outside of the fuselage and the multiple holes, the five holes, should be against the firewall like that. Now one thing we did with the raw steel parts before we uh, are going to prime them is we're going to take this edge off right here. We can show it to you. So this edge right here, we're going to take that off. And you can see we've kind of already done it on this piece here. So we've got a nice rounded corner here. It's no longer sharp. We don't like sharp corners, especially on something that's going to have a lot of stress and a lot of vibration on it. We want to make everything nice and rounded, sand up the edges nice and soft. We'll then prime this up. Of course, after we drill the holes, we'll drill the holes first, remove it all, deburr everything, make sure we have no chips in there, and then we'll prime this up and we'll bolt it in place. And like I said, here is the uh, right side uh, engine gusset. This will essentially be right here, right along the side like that, and there'll be three AN bolts right in there to hold that against there, along with the engine mount. All right, guys, day two on the engine installation of our Zenith Super Duty here in the AeroWorks workshop. Uh, I'm finishing up fabbing up the lower engine mount shims and mounts. We're gonna get those primed up and then we're gonna get them installed. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna take, a, take you over here to the bench and show you what we got here. You can see here, we've got the, the two lower engine mounts. Now they require a small shim because there's a, uh, a step where inside of the cabin here, I'll take you over there with me. You'll see here, right down in here. Let's see if I can get that zoomed in enough here. Bear with me one second. Right here, you see the three holes. There's a step right here because you've got the uh, this angle right there. So what the shim does is basically take up this gap. Okay. I don't know if I grabbed the right side there, but that takes up the gap. Yeah, I got the wrong side. But, uh, and then your engine mount goes on here. Of course, I've got the other side to mount. But this takes up the gap to make it level. Your engine mount goes on here and of course bolts through and bolts through the floor. So that is where we are currently at uh, today. We are also in the process. Let me get the camera flipped around here. Sorry for that. Here we go. Okay, so upper engine mount, we actually got those drilled last night and put in. We're going to be opening up the lower holes this afternoon and getting those drilled once we get our mount put in there. And, uh, and then we're ready for engine mount, guys. And I would suspect that if I don't start it tonight, by tomorrow, the Super Duty will be back on three wheels and there will be a 195 horsepower engine hanging off the front of here. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Um, so we're going to keep working. One little word of caution here. Uh, when you go to put these, this hardware in on the nose strut reinforcement area, I had taken this apart here to uh, do some uh, engineering on something else. And then when I put it back in, I put the bolts in from the outside in and the nuts on the inside, not thinking. And of course they don't fit. So save yourself some time of having to redo 16 bolts and make sure you put the heads from the outside or the inside out and your nuts on the outside, not the other way around, or you will not get your nose strut in there. So just a little friendly uh, advice on that one. My mistake, fixed, ready to move on to the next thing.
Well, there she is, guys. Fully installed Viking engine mount on the Super Duty. A couple days of work on and off, getting everything fabbed up and in place and tightened down and put on and taken off and back on again and taken off again. But you got to do it. You got to do it right. This is a, a pretty essential part of the aircraft, the engine and engine mount. So we don't want that falling off and we want it installed right. You'll notice I do have the stock gear back on. That's the route we're going right now. We'll talk more about that other strut later. But it is on to engine hanging time. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Well, hey guys, it's finally done. I finally got the Viking 195 Turbo installed in the AeroWorks One project. Really getting excited now because we can actually see an airplane coming together. Obviously, there's a ton of work left to do, but I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching the en engine go on the Super Duty here. Uh, again, we've got a lot more work to do. We've got engine wiring, engine hoses. We've got our panel out right now getting powder coated and labeled. When that comes back, we'll be assembling the panel and kind of doing everything at once, kind of having that panel installed, we'll get a tray installed, and then we'll start tying everything together. Sensors, gauges, wiring, hoses, all that stuff will start coming together with the goal of trying to get the fuselage all wrapped up and so we can roll it away and start getting those wings finished up. Now we got one wing started, we'll start the second wing, we'll start getting the, everything installed in there with the wiring and the hoses and everything for the uh, pitot tube and all that. So lots more coming. We're out working heavy in the shop. Hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Sorry we took a little break there. We were doing a little bit of traveling for work. So we're back and we're back at it strong. And uh, again, seeing something like the Viking 195 with the Duke prop on there, it really gets you motivated to uh, finish. There's a lot of other guys out there. Uh, if you're watching some of the other builds going on, Joe's RC is another great channel. If you're building a cruiser, he's building a cruiser. This is a Super Duty. Uh, there's other people out there building channel. Mark's got a channel. He's building a Super Duty as well. So if you're looking for inspiration, there's a lots of good content out there. Whether you be uh, on the Facebook groups, on YouTube, all you got to do is search Zenith, Zenith 750. You'll come across all kinds of videos. So guys, hope you're liking the videos. Keep watching, keep thumbs upping, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my head.